Contractor's Secret Weapon weekly podcast with your hosts, Dave Negri. This program is dedicated to helping contractors, remodelers, painters, roofers, roof cleaners, and business owners in the construction industry gain an unfair advantage over the competition. This program supplies you with information that the competition doesn't even know exists. This session brought to you by ContractorsSecretWeapon.com. Hey, welcome to another episode of Contractor Secret Weapon. Thanks so much for being with us today. This is Dave Negri, your host. And today I have with us again um, Ruth Ann King. And Ruth has been on the show before. Uh, I think it was episode 125 where we talked about maintenance agreements. And, of course, maintenance agreements is the key to your future success. And I get jazzed about it because I make a ton of money on maintenance agreements with my business. And uh, so Ruth's put together um, a program. And actually today's subject topic is how to put a million dollars in your bank account over the next 10 years through maintenance agreements. Now, Ruth works mostly in the AC, uh, heating and air uh, uh, niche, and but that doesn't make a difference because maintenance agreements are maintenance agreements. She knows how to do them, she knows how to put them together, and she knows how to make you profitable. And uh, we've been talking about some things. So we just started the conversation. So we're just going to jump into the conversation where we started, and this is the introduction. So here we go. So, how have you been? I've been really well. How are you doing? Uh, great. Um, just crazy. You know, the fun stuff. Uh, That's the general idea. Yeah. So, I had, a, I had a call yesterday, and the guy goes, oh, don't rush. I said, are you kidding me? That's my life. Rush here. Rush there. Uh, so, what's, so, let's, um, what are we going to talk about? I, I, was it, uh, was you said something about how to make a million dollars a year in, or a million dollars revenue a year with... Uh, oh, that's right. How to put a million dollars in the bank in 10 years. In 10 years <laughs> on, on recurring income or... Using maintenance agreements. On maintenance agreements. Let's do that. Let's do okay. That would be awesome because uh, let's talk about maintenance agreements. I just did one yesterday, one of my customers, and I've had them for 27 years. I go there and my maintenance agreement is... Nine hundred and ninety-seven dollars a year, and it's just to pressure clean and clean everything. Um, that's to clean the house, the roof, wash the windows, and it's a good size house. It's about three thousand square feet. And then, and every year, for since I started the maintenance agreement, he uh, has other stuff done. So, like this year, I walked away with thirty-one hundred dollars. Yeah, and uh, and he loves it. That's the funny part is that, no, it's not that it's, it's a, you know, I'm going in and, and I love going in and getting more money out of them. But, I, you know, was, I always, right, this year he called me and said, I want to get it done early. I'm going to Chicago to see my grandkids, and I just want to get it done early. I said, that's fine. And he, he texts me a whole list of stuff that he wants done. So by this, this crazy maintenance agreement, we've got... An increased lifetime value of a customer of over four hundred percent. Yeah, I'm not cutting this out. No, it's it's true. I mean, it really and truly is. If you do the maintenance right and they trust you, they'll give you all their work. Yeah, and and it's like just do it. I didn't, yeah. I, and I don't have to give them a price. I mean, I'm always fair. I mean, I don't think I've gone up in five years, but still. I know it's reoccurring revenue every year, and he trusts me. Yeah. And yeah. I'm the go-to yeah. guy. Dave, who can we do to, to do our, uh, our bathrooms? We want to get our bathrooms remodeled. I give him a name. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah. And, they, and it's like he walked me out. He patted me on the back. So I'm so glad to, to see you here and take care of my house. I mean, I would love to have like 1,000 customers like that. Yeah, and you will. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, that was the, the, yeah, that was, but that's just, I think that uh, we get uh, caught up uh, into the uh, transactional mode and we don't think about the future enough. Yeah, I would agree. I would definitely agree. It's like, this is the thing. Now, it takes, you know, nine or ten years. I had one contractor put away $1.7 million in seven years, but that's not normal. 
that's not usual. You know what I'm saying? It's right. just, it just happened that way. But in reality, in, you know, if you, if you add a hundred contracts, a hundred new maintenance agreements a year for 10 years and you put the money away and your maintenance agreement price is $180 and you renew 80% of them in 10 years, you'll have a little over a million dollars in the bank. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Yeah, I know. And that's the cool part is that, you know, you got to think about, you got to think about more than today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so let's, uh, so let's talk about your, uh, I'm just going to go from where we started. So let's talk about, let's go back to the, the, the clients that you have and how you get them to realize the importance of putting together a, uh, a maintenance agreement to further the growth of their business? Well, most of them are struggling in the beginning. And, and it's not that the, you know, they're struggling to pay their bills occasionally yeah. in the heating and air world and in a lot of worlds. There's a lot of seasonality. Wow. So there's busy times and slow times. And this is one way to get rid of the slow times and busy times. So the way I look at it is, okay, if you want – to do something about it, it's not an overnight fix. However, it will actually help you get rid of a lot of the seasonality. It will build a great customer base. It will give you something to sell later on for all of your years of hard work. Whereas if you don't have maintenance and recurring revenue, then you your business is not worth as much. And so it's usually a change in, in thought process. A lot of times it's a change in culture in the company. Um, and there's lots of different things that they think they know. It. There's enough people doing maintenance and heating and air who are doing real well with it so that people want to start or they don't know where to start or they need a program to start or, you know, somewhere in the middle of all of that, and then we help them do it. So most of your, your clients are heating and air. Or plumbing. Or plumbing. A, a I, little bit of electrical. I've got a gate access company, you okay. know. So different things. I know that it, with the the and and it and it really doesn't matter what industry you're in. You can put no. together a some sort of a recurring revenue or maintenance agreement. And I know that uh, uh, plumbers always say it's hard to do and they can't do it. And you know, of course, looking into um, it, I'm going. I can put one together in five minutes because I'm looking for something that the customer won't do. Like they won't right. inspect their pipes every year. They won't, right. they won't, uh, I, I remember there's those, remember those, uh, um, I was telling plumbers to give away those little moisture meters Yes. Mm-hmm. away and just throw them under the sink, give one away mm-hmm. and cause they come in packs of three and everyone's going to go, well, what about my other sinks? Oh, we sell those, but we're giving you one for free. Yeah. And then, and then upgrade them, uh, later on down the road cause they're going to fail. The batteries are going to go. And uh, have you you've have you ever heard of uh, is it water cop? No. It's uh, it's actually a um, a system that you attach to your plumbing that you that will notify you if there's a leak by email and it'll actually shut it off. Mm-hmm. But it's a whole system. I mean, it's a whole other business within a business for a plumber. But it's by doing starting those little things. So there's right. always something. It's just getting people to think, well, I can't do that. And I think that's the biggest. Is it because they don't want to think or they're lazy? Or what do you think the problem is? Fear. It's fear, number one. It's change, number two. Um, and if it doesn't work perfectly the first time, they give up. And a lot of it is you're so ingrained into your habits that you know, something different is difficult to do to ingrain another habit. Well, yeah, I didn't learn to walk the first time, but I, I, I ended up mastering it. Well, until I get older now, I trip and fall all the time. But, um, yeah, no, I, that's, that's understandable to have the fear of the unknown and trying something new. You know, how are people going to respond to it? But I can tell you from experience that every time that I've instituted it, it's like, they're so thankful that someone actually cares about what's going on with their home. Yeah. And there's someone there to look after it for them in whatever capacity, whether you're the electrician, you're the plumber, uh, the AC guy, the painter. Um, for the most part, the people that are going to take this type of program are really ecstatic about it because 
that's something that they don't have to concern themselves with because there's so much going on in our worlds today. Yeah, exactly. It's one less thing they have to worry about. They know they can make one phone call and it's taken care of. Yeah. And now here's, uh, I mean, to really push the envelope for some of you guys, it would be uh, advantageous to find other contractors who are doing the maintenance programs and, and work together with each other's clients. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like plumbing and HVAC or handyman, yeah. you know, yeah. painter, roofer. Yeah. And just uh, and, and work together a system, and now you guys w- can just work off of each other's customers, and you don't need to get uh, new customers to do it. It should just be an automatic thing with a new customer. Once you service them, say, hey, we're going to... We're doing this, and would you like to be a part of it? And we'll incentivize you to do it, whether it be the first month for free or... Uh, I remember, and this is basically... Um, and this is a dog food company. The guy sold dog food, had it delivered, and uh, one lady was... And he would give away a month's supply for free for every referral. And so it's... I love looking at other different industries and seeing what who's doing what. Mm-hmm. Because you can see what's working. I think most of the time, and this is one of my pet peeves, is uh, a lot of people look with own, in their own industry and they copy somebody else and it doesn't work. Yeah. And they're not going to tell you it doesn't work because they don't want you to succeed. But if you look and see what other people are doing to succeed in, whether it be marketing or, or campaigns and stuff like that, then uh, you can copy that and know that it's just... just um, address it to your own industry yeah i would agree so what uh so once they get past the uh trial and error stage uh how long does it usually take uh your people to come to the realization that this is going to work the first time they have work to do in the slower season they may not have a full schedule in the slower season, but they have more work to do than they've ever done in the slow season, or they've had the best year they've ever had. One of the two happens. Then they get hooked. Okay. Then you, yeah. then you know the system is working, and then you know, you, okay, then you tweak it, and then you just keep going, and it becomes a machine. It becomes a cultural and marketing machine. So, uh, so I would. So, what I'm hearing you say for all you guys that are listening is that if you're going to do maintenance agreements or service contracts. Push them towards your slower season so that you have revenue coming in and you can keep your guys busy. Well, that happens in the beginning, but yeah. at, a, at some point in time, you're going to have people who are only doing this and they do it year round. Um, right. Yeah, but in the beginning, you're going to put everybody doing this in the slower season, but in it, its revenue that you've already collected in some cases. Right. And right. you're in a situation where there's work to do, that you may be finding more things that they want you to, to, to do, or any number of things that will keep your guys productive from a revenue perspective. Right. There was, I was talking with a guy down in south of uh, where I live. He runs a painting and pressure washing company. And during his, actually it's not even a slow season, but during the summer months he keeps 12 guys busy five days a week on roof maintenance. Yeah. He says, I said, how much does that come to in revenue? He goes, $600,000 a year. And I'm going, yeah. I said, did, did, did you plan it? He goes, heck no, I didn't plan it. It just grew into a beast. Yeah. You know, so he says, I know every summer, and it's a yearly maintenance. They just go out and they spray this uh, solution on the roofs, and it prevents uh, mildew and algae from growing, and then they do it again next year. And, yeah. and he goes, it just, and it's, and it's, and he lives in an affluent area, but I don't think that really would make a difference as long yeah. as, because he's got a tremendous uh, amount of uh, homeowners association that he deals with. So it, it's, it's like I said, it's another business within a business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's probably in an area, if he was in Maine, for example, he couldn't do that in the winter. Right. right. But, you know, where he is, he can absolutely do it. And you just generate the revenue, put it away, and there's money when it's slower, not slow. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happens. A lot of guys get into a, a situation where it gets slow and they haven't put money aside. And so now they're really pulling their hair out. Let's put it that way. Yeah. 
I'm just thinking about some of the other. So, uh, okay, let's talk about plumbers because I know sometimes plumbers have a real challenge with uh, providing a maintenance agreement. What are some of the things that you've seen with uh, some of the people you know? Well, I can give you a horror story for starters. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) You know, if you do not know and test where the shutoff valves are in, you know, everywhere in your house, including the main shutoff valve, we had a situation where a pipe burst and the guy didn't know where the shutoff valves were for the different, you know, plumbing, plumbing fixtures in his home. And, you know, as part of maintenance, you check all the shutoff valves. Had, you know, he now has a maintenance plan for his plumbing, and the guys come in once a year, and now he knows where all the shutoff valves are. But it cost him a lot of money in terms of heartache and everything. Insurance paid most of it. But the reality is, is had he known where those were, it would have been a whole lot less damage than actually happened in that house. Right. So, you know, that's one thing plumbing guys do. They make sure that you're... Um, Depending upon the age of your water heater, um, if they're brand new, you can actually do the maintenance on the older ones. I would suggest you don't start because you are going to usually cause them to fail yes. if you if you try it and it's 15 years old or something yeah. like that. So that doesn't work. But there's a lot of things that you can do in the homes. You know, Just check everything. Make sure that there, nothing's leaking. Make sure that everything's flowing. Um, throw ice down the um, garbage disposal to make sure that and clean that type of thing. I mean, so there's, there's things that you can do from a plumbing perspective, and you put together an agreement where homeowners, number one, you know, once a year is not going to kill them. If there is a plumbing problem, they know who they're going to call. Right. They get a discount on, on a plumbing repair, and a lot of times you do no overtime charges. And guess what? People do it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you throw in, like I've talked to uh, some roofers, and I said, listen, if you throw them into – people that are on your, your maintenance agreements or your yearly maintenance agreements, if you throw them into uh, a club, let's say, you know, whatever the case may be, that they get moved to the top of the list when uh, they call in yeah. for an emergency. And they go, yeah. we can't do that. And I go, dude, do yes, you do. I says, dude, are you kidding me? Who knows where the top of the list is? Only you do. Yeah, or the next available person yeah. goes. Right. And, and that's really what you say is the next available person will be at your home. Right. And that's where it is. You know, clog drains, you know, et cetera, clean the drains out. I mean, lots of things that you can do. Sure. I know one of the big things for me is, is like, and now that as the old uh, hoses for the washers. Yeah. They go a lot. And then, of course, the pipes underneath the sink because you're always banging them by throwing stuff under there. And yeah. Yeah, it can be endless. And, you see, it doesn't take a whole lot to think about what are uh, some of the things you can do to offer and it doesn't have to be that expensive. And I know with AC guys, I know guys that go out and they'll change filters every year. Yeah. On a regular basis. Just so they know that they get, and they get to see the people. And then whatever else needs to be done. Yeah. So, electrical. What about electrical? What do you see? Have you got anybody that does electrical? I don't have anybody who does electrical. I can just imagine that you check breaker boxes. I'm not familiar enough with that particular industry to, to know. I know that from a commercial perspective, it's changing ballasts and things along those lines, right. but residentially, I'm not so sure there's a whole lot you can do. Now, generator maintenance, if you want to include that, Up north, yeah. of, you have to do generator maintenance. Otherwise, the generators won't work. There is There are maintenance kits that you purchase and you change them out every single year. That has to be done. So that's a perfect reason to have a generator maintenance agreement. I'm sure that... Um you know, with uh, up in in the colder areas, just uh, your your uh, uh, was it? Oh, I remember. As I was I was I was listening to something about the nine word email. And it was a plumber actually in England, and uh, killer response. He would just send out. You know, it's it's fall. Have you had your um, what do they call them? The, not um, the hot. There's not really a, the boilers. They're, they're boil. They have boilers, I guess, down in the. the yeah, and boilers need to be checked every year yeah. too. That's not. So a, that's said, yeah. Yeah. So he sends out a nine-word email. It's fall. <laughs> if you had your boilers checked for the winter, and that's it. And it's then he got killed with yeah. uh, responses from his customers. No, yeah. come and do it. 
hurry up before winter gets here and something happens and I got to pay you more money. Yeah. So it's just really thinking ahead of the game. Yeah, and you can do it from a, once the marketing machine starts, once the maintenance machine starts. You know, getting it cranked up takes a little bit of trial and error, but sure. if you use a proven plan, there's not much of it. The thing that you've got to do is make sure in your own head that it's going to work because there'll always be one customer in a thousand who you will remember forever that drives you absolutely insane. And, and, and that you forget about the other 999 who are perfectly happy, perfectly contented and everything else like that. Um, so that's there, you know, you just have to remember that there will be many, 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 many more people who are happy than sad. Oh, absolutely. But it's always that one negative that, that, yeah, and that's what you have a tendency to remember rather than the ones that you helped. Yeah. So that's that's really cool. So you, your guy that's put uh, the million dollars in the bank, when you first... There's lots of guys who put million dollars in the bank yeah, now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so they're following your proven system. Okay, listen, everybody, you need to get a hold of Ruth so you can put together a system so she will help you put a million dollars in the bank over the next 10 years so that if you want to retire, you can do that. Or if you want to expand your business, you can do that. So I'm going to give you a, a plug, but we'll keep going. How do our, how does everyone get a hold of you, Ruth? Um, they can send me an email to rking, R-K-I-N-G, at on the ribbon, O-N-T-H-E-R-I-B-B-O-N.com. They can call me at 770-729-8000. And one of those two will actually get to me. Cool. Cool. So you've got a lot of guys that have, have trusted you into helping them make more money with uh, this recurring revenue. And um, I think I've always thought it's so cool because it's just um, – it is what it is. It's another, yeah. bus- it's another business within a business. It, um, I know that uh, if you look at it correctly, like I know restaurants that sell uh, you know, certain club you know, things and – they actually will get uh, 25% of their revenue from that reoccurring revenue so that <laughs> their, their, their lights, their electricity, and their rent are paid before they collect a dime yeah. for food and stuff. And yeah. that's yeah. sweet. Yeah, what you like to do is figure out what the overhead of your company is and figure out how many of the whatever you're doing you need to cover the entire overhead of your company. So if your overhead is is a hundred thousand dollars and your maintenance plan is a hundred dollars, you need a thousand maintenance agreements. If I did my math right, right, to handle your entire overhead, then you sleep better at night. Yeah, for sure. You don't have to worry about payroll. I mean, you don't have to worry about that stuff because it's there. It's already yeah. infused into the system of your your machine. Yeah. Instead of going out and borrowing money so you can make things happen and right. praying that uh, you get more business. You've already created right. the, you've already created the monster that eats eats uh, or, or spits out cash. Yeah. That is uh, so uh, <laughs> yeah, and you know and if you have listeners who are not, you know, in plumbing, electrical, heating and air, you know, roofing, you know, that type of thing. Let's say you've got a a cus- you know, somebody who happened to be listening to this, you know, if you think about it, there are wine clubs, there are yeah. different food clubs, there are health and beauty clubs, there are gym membership clubs. I mean, people are used to doing recurring revenue. They just don't think about it as recurring revenue. No, right. Now, I know when we went out to, to uh, Napa Valley a few years ago, there were wines that I've never seen in the store. And their whole winery runs on a wine club. Yep. Mm-hmm. Their whole their whole business runs on a a stinking wine club, and you're going, yeah. this is crazy, but it works. No, yeah, but it's real. If yeah. they do it, yeah. And it, there's one winery out there who only sells wine to Alaskan Airlines. Talk about one customer being dangerous. That is scary thought. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, no, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> 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 I've been there when I first started business. I had a builder that it, that it had a hundred percent, and yeah. uh, when he owed me fifty thousand dollars before he went out of business, I almost went out too. You're right. You exactly. know, so it's like, uh, and I have guys that'll talk to me and say, "Well, what do you think about this?" And I go, well, "You know, I, I have a plumber, and we talk once in a while." He goes, "Oh, I've got this guy that does thirty-two kitchens uh, a month, 
and uh, he wants me to, to, you know, install the uh, sinks and stuff like that. And I said, so you're ready to take on a partner? He goes, what do you mean? I says, well, if you if he becomes over 50% of your business, you just took on He's a partner. partner. Yeah. And he regulates how much business you're going to do, how much money you're going to make. Are you willing to do that for the dollar signs you see of 32 kitchens? I didn't think about it like that. Well, no. you have to. Yeah. Because it's Be very not, careful. Yeah. Be very careful. It's not, it's not about chasing money. It's about keeping money. It does not matter what you sell. Uh, you know, what, it matters what you sell, but it matters more what you keep. Yes. That's the whole point is why you went into business. It wasn't to generate revenue. It was to keep money. That's, right. that's called profit, not expenses. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what are – I'm just thinking um, – so, okay, let's talk about getting started. Let's just say you come up with an idea and let's help uh, everyone think about how to get things started. And uh, So you come up with an idea of a maintenance program. I know how I got mine started and I just wrote a letter to all my customers. And I just said, here's what I'm doing. And I laid out uh, three programs. I, you know, it was, uh, you know, a gold, a silver, gold, and, and platinum. And one was the in everyone was an extension of the first one, just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And it was ranged from I don't know at that time it was like six hundred dollars to a thousand dollars a year. And then we gave them some extra stuff, like if sure. you know if they did you know uh, we'd give them, and it was you know from five to ten percent discount on on future business. But it's really not that hard, and just. You know, your customers, I sent out this huge letter, and, you know, it's like, okay, you know, Dave, you you cannot, this is the first, pretty much the first letter I wrote. And I said, how can I write a four-page letter I've never written before? And by the time I got done with the letter, it was ten pages. I had to figure out how to make it four. And uh, so then I sent it out to my customers, and I had one later, why don't you just say you're putting together a maintenance program? Are you interested? And I go, that's great, but, you know, not everyone <laughs> likes the simplicity of that. <laughs> Well, you have to talk to them about the benefits of doing it. The first thing you've got to do, number one, is figure out what you're going to do, what the benefit is to the customer. does not matter what the feature is. does not matter what you are doing. It's what benefit, by, what benefit occurs because you did something. Right. All right? So you've got to look at it from a perspective of does it save you money? Does it save you time? Does it give you peace of mind? Does it prevent, prevent or you know, let you know of things that are going on in your house? Um, you know, those types of things. So. That's what you have to figure out first or, you know, your home or what can it do to increase your health, increase your, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. You know, I know we're talking about contractors here. But it all all goes back to emotion. I don't care. Whatever happens, you need to tie your benefit around their emotional well-being, whether it's a fear emotion, a happy emotion, like the fear if you, you know, if we take care of this, the likely chances of your house flooding will dramatically decrease. Yeah. So that when you get out of bed at night, you're not stepping in a puddle, or you're away on vacation, <laughs> or you're away on vacation. So that's the only times your your pipes break is when you're on vacation, or you've got a vacation home and you're gone for six months. Yeah. So you know, so you got to really make it an emotional benefit for them, so they can feel the pain if they don't take it. Yeah. And then after it happens, they'll do it. Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, think about what you want to offer. Think about, you know, what have your customers asked you for? And that's a really good way. Just think about what your customers have asked you for and what they're interested in. And, and you've had conversations with your customers, I'm sure. sure. And then write, write all the lists down. Then do it from a benefits, not a features perspective. You know, what's in it for me type thing. Right. And put a price on it and put an order form on the back of it or, you know, sign up on pay for it online, depending on how you're set up. And send it out. Right. Follow up, and, and here's just one word of caution: whatever price you put on it, add ten percent because you're thinking it's too expensive. I would add more than that. Well, I'm just being nice because most people are afraid to go to the ten. Well, I'll tell you what: figure out how much it costs you, how much you want to, to sell or to enroll in, and then divide that by your overhead, and that's your price. Right. So make it 
make it make it logical, not emotional. For right. you. For you. Sure. Mm-hmm. And, and sell it sell it based on emotion, not logic. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's how you do it. It's yeah. not hard. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah, and you're doing it. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah. It's easy. It really is easy. Once they once they get to the duh, you know, and my whole when I first put it together, my whole um approach to it was I had been buying and selling houses uh, prior to going back into the co- my painting contracting business and we would get such huge discounts because people didn't maintain their homes. That yeah. they, they had to take a discount in order to sell it. So we were like buying houses at 50 cents on a dollar. So when I when I um, came back into the, the, the painting side of it, I'm going, well, what can I do different? So we, what we did was we offered the maintenance programs in reverse that. Say, listen, you know, I, I've been buying and selling houses, and we did it. And the reason we bought so many houses at such a cheap price is because people didn't take care of their homes. Let me help you take care of your homes so that if you, you'll never have to take a discount because your home is not maintained. The only time you'll give a discount is if you want to take a discount, not because you have to. Because there's always those aha moments in the end when you've never maintained your house that you go back around and you go, oh, man, it's going to cost me $10,000 for that siding. But if it costs you $1,000 a year over the last 10 years to maintain it, then there's no aha moments in the end. Yeah. And so we, we dealt with the pain of what it could be. So, again, this has really been awesome. So... Ruth, you can help all these guys who want to put together maintenance programs. Right. And uh, so how can they get a hold of you again? All right. 770-729-8000. R. King, R-K-I-N-G, at ontheribbon.com. O-N-T-H-E-R-I-B-B-O-N.com. Cool. Happy to help you. Awesome. So, um, guys, really, you need to talk to Ruth about uh, maintenance uh, agreements, how to put them together. Uh, she'll help you put together a program, and um, if she's worth every penny that she charges you, and uh, because it's an investment in your business. Um, so we're going to put all the stuff on the show notes so you can get a hold of Ruth, and then uh, we'll email it out to everyone that's on our email list also. That uh, so they'll make sure that they get to listen to this. Ruth, it's really been fun. I love talking with you because this is one of my one of my focal points. I just you know I don't think more people need to get it. Yep, they do. And I'm on a mission to make sure they do. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much for spending time with me. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hope we help some people. All right. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for another weekly episode of the Contractor's Secret Weapon Podcast with Dave Negri. We would love to hear your comments about this episode, so visit us online at www.contractorsecretweapon.com and let us hear your thoughts. If you were listening via iTunes, please leave us a positive review. The more positive reviews we receive, the more other contractors will benefit from this show. Thank you, and see you next time here on the Contractor's Secret Weapon Podcast.